Okay. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Olga. And today I'd like to share what I learned about VR usability testing to help everyone to create better VR apps. Uh, my background is in product design and branding. And at VR Oxygen, I work on a social educational type of VR experience. And I also do some consulting with um, VR companies and indie devs on their uh, usability apps and VR design. Uh, and also VR Oxygen actually has a YouTube channel where you can find some tutorials uh, about how to deploy your VR app to a mobile device and find, you can find some fun VR games, so you can check it out. And I think, yeah, let's get started. So today I will show you uh, how to make sure that your VR experience is successful. Because obviously everyone wants to get five stars rating and uh, all the downloads of their VR apps when creating it. So uh, yeah, I definitely want to make people love it. So today, let's see what we have. So first I'll talk about uh, what, about the main questions. Uh, why is it important to make a usability study? What should we study? Uh, with whom uh, and uh, where to find all those people who desire to test your app. Second, I'll show you some usability study methods and some of the tools. And third, I'll talk about uh, analysis and evaluation, and I'll show some of the key findings. Um, just a few examples uh, that I think are interesting to learn. And uh, let's start. So first, uh, why is it important to test a VR experience? Uh, because uh, you can, through testing, you can uh, validate and evaluate. You can see what is uh, working not as intended. And um, you can understand if there are any bugs in the experience if um, anything gives any problem, you can also um, avoid such issues uh, like throwing away the whole idea, so you can test your idea. Um, and you, uh, possibly you can avoid uh, rebuild, uh, rebuilding your full app, at least on a big scale. Uh, and uh, also it's important that you can also uh, use this method to generate new ideas um, and find the right direction. And uh, um, yeah, also, so there are uh, plenty of interesting things to discover when doing usability testing, uh, such as um, how different uh, demographics use the app and if people understand how to use it, and if they actually enjoy using it, if they uh, want to recommend it <clears throat> to other people, and uh, if they want to continue using it themselves. Um, and uh, yeah, so basically there are many things to discover. Uh, it will help to make the right design decisions. Uh, because uh, it's important to make sure that your VR experience uh, is based on user needs and their desires, and also definitely business goals, and will help with uh, ensuring the longevity of vision, uh, just to make sure that your, uh, just the whole idea will work in the long run. Um, Next question, next question is, when should we test? So it's important to test early and test often. So basically, you need to test uh, during all stages of your VR de development and design. Um, and let's see, for example, uh, this is an example of some of the pieces of a prototype uh, I made some time ago. And you can see that you don't have to uh, get a very polished experience or a polished prototype. You, you even don't have to complete it. So you can test a small piece 
Uh, like here, for example, I wanted to test if it's comfortable uh, to use a certain interaction. It's, uh, it was made for cardboard. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I called this method um, uh, VR gray boxing. So you can see that I just made some 3D objects, like very simple, and threw them uh, into Unity from Blender. Uh, and here, uh, we just saw that you can also just create um, a sketch. It's basic, it's, uh, uh, you can do it on paper, but you can also use a Photoshop and put it onto a cube map and create a, a skybox. Um, and check, you can use it uh, as a VR storyboard. So this is what I do. I think it's an interesting way to preview scenes. And this way, uh, you can check um, colors, brightness, uh, blocking. Blocking is uh, when you check where the objects are located. So it's a really uh, important. It's really uh, can be, uh, may maybe sometimes it can be a little tedious because, for example, for mobile you have to make a build each time you need to test. But if you are working with Oculus, you can just preview it and it's really worth doing it. Uh, okay, so next, uh, what exactly should we test? Uh, you should define uh, what you want to test inside of your experience. For you, you want uh, to, because it can be um, as well very, very different uh, things that could cause different issues. And let's say, for example, you already defined why you want to test. Let's say, uh, as an example, you want to find out why do people leave at certain time uh, from your experience, or why do they quit some certain level? Um, and it can be because of uh, various issues. For example, um, because an app has uh, different bugs, <laughs> um, so it can crash at some point. So that's why people quit. Uh, just cannot uh, technically continue. Uh, it may be because an app is too slow, maybe it's loading slow. Uh, it can be that people don't understand how to proceed further or they just, they are confused, they don't know what to do next. Uh, it can be also that um, interactions or behaviors are confusing. And uh, it can be as well an environment that it's uncomfortable and uh, irritating for eyes, and so on. And uh, uh, let's see as an example. For example, it can be a contrast issue that people don't notice mm, UI or a button. It also happened uh, when I did some tests. Or it can be that people get stuck uh, and don't know how to proceed further, or they just, <laughs> just uh, cannot proceed further because they really got stuck. Uh, and finally, whom to test with. Uh, first, definitely test with yourself. Uh, obviously, it's um, the easiest way. So you can see right away what you did. And um, uh, uh, I want to stress that it's really uh, beneficial because in VR, it looks really different from desktop. So if you create something in 3D, let's say, on your computer, uh, when you move it to VR, it will look completely different if it's your, if it's your first um, scene. And definitely don't forget to test with your team. Uh, I would recommend to involve uh, everyone, absolutely everyone who was working on your experience to get some insights. Uh, so next, uh, you can work uh, with experts. Uh, when I say experts, I mean people with the uh, domain expertise uh, in the area your app or experience is in. Um, for example, if you 
let's see what's next. Yes, uh, if your app is um, in medicine, some medical app, you can, uh, you not can, you have to test with people who are experts in medicine and specifically in the field your app is uh, intended for. And definitely you can test with VR experts. They can give you some other insights into maybe issues you may have or you may encounter in the future. And definitely the most uh, important is to test with your target audience. Uh, it's uh, if you may want to skip the previous, if you have no opportunity to test uh, with experts or, or with all the team members, to test with target audience, uh, you cannot really skip this point. Uh, because if you don't, you may find out when your app is ready that it's not exactly what they wanted or w what they expected. Uh, also important is to compare new uh, users versus experienced users because um, new users, for example, they may, uh, they may be very sensitive to certain aspects of VR. Like, for example, they are definitely uh, <laughs> are more sensitive to motion sickness um, and, and experienced uh, users, they develop uh, uh, resistance to that. Or, for example, experienced users, they uh, may know already certain locomotion techniques. Uh, they may know some features or, yeah, they just may not notice some issues that may be crucial for new users. But definitely pay attention to the target audience, maybe if your target audience is uh, experienced users, so definitely test it, pay attention more to experienced users. And finally, where to find all those people who desperately desire to test your app. Uh, so I can recommend you to follow the user journey. Uh, so user journey is um, the full end-to-end -end experience. You can um, think about it and create a map for yourself so it's easier for you to understand. Um, it involves the whole experience with uh, all the feelings, uh, the motivations, uh, why people would want to use your app, in what situation, uh, what would trigger this wish to use your app. Uh, it's actually really important. Uh, so pay attention to context. Um, for example, uh, you can go to a certain event, uh, like expos, different exhibitions, uh, to find people who may want to test your app. But um, uh, remember that, for example, if your app is educational, uh, you should select uh, events that are relevant to your target audience. So some events where you can find your potential uh, target audience people. So just what I'm saying, it can be really different. Probably you want to test it in the pool, but it's really different. Uh, so finally, uh, second part, uh, usability study methods and tools. I'll talk about heuristic evaluation, guerrilla user testing, in-person and remote user testing, and uh, I will say a couple of words about VR analytics. Uh, let's start with heuristic evaluation. Um, so heuristic evaluation is um, evaluation of a VR app based on compliance of this VR app with certain VR principles. Um, I can show you some documents. So right now it's on paper, but in about two weeks it will be available as an online tool. 
Um, so there are 58 heuristics now. So, back? Okay. One more? Uh, well, it's not really, I thought that it's small, I mean, uh, not really for reading, maybe right now, but just wanted to show, <laughs> to show you <laughs> uh, that there is such document you can check. And uh, in about two weeks, it will be uh, updated, actually, so it will, be, it will have some new and refined points. Uh, and uh, it was created based on uh, research, tests, and also some other valuable resources. So I think, yeah, we'll just... Uh, so right now you can download it on vroxygen.com, uh, but like I said, you can also sign up to the mailing list there because when it's ready, I will send a notification uh, that it's ready. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, okay, let's get to guerrilla testing. Yes, <laughs> uh, so here, um, let's call the person facilitator. So it's a person who will conduct the usability tests. Uh, goes uh, basically anywhere. It can be a cafe or an exhibition or anywhere else. And approaches people uh, in the wild <laughs> and asks them to participate in the test. Uh, it can be challenging. Uh, if you are using Oculus Rift, but it's really easy to do if you are working on a mobile experience. So for example, here I can show you what I did. I went to various expos, uh, not VR related, but I selected the ones that were uh, applicable and where it was okay to show VR and where it matched the topic. And one more. Um, also, you can, during those tests, uh, depending on your participants, you can vid videotape, you can ask to fill out a questionnaire, you can uh, ask questions uh, as an in-person interview, and so on. So it's usually very casual and uh, can be kind of spontaneous. And next, let's go to in-person and remote testing. So this method is probably the most accurate and the most productive method to do user testing, but it's also the most challenging because it requires uh, a big setup and uh, a lot of time and maybe even some um, investments. So you, what you would need to conduct uh, VR user testing, uh, especially in person one, you would need a full setup, either uh, an office or uh, any room where you can set up not only an HMD, which uh, can be any Oculus, uh, Gear VR, Vive, anything you use. But also you would need uh, a camera or a smartphone. You can use uh, your smartphone in order to record the tester. Uh, also you would need um, software to mirror what's happening inside of the VR headset because in VR, we cannot see what's happening, uh, what user sees, so we cannot look behind the shoulder. So you can get uh, an Oculus mirror, and in the, very, in the very end, I will have slides uh, with a link where you can get it. So it's inside of the uh, Oculus folder when you set it up. Uh, and you can also get uh, a software called OBS, uh, it will, it can record and live stream, so you can record uh, uh, the, um, what's happening in the headset for future use, for example. And always um, ask person who are you testing with to think aloud. Um, 
so the person would just tell what the he or she sees, what's happening, uh, what they think uh, they need to do, maybe ask some questions, what they want to do, and yeah, just explain, uh, think aloud, it's called. And uh, why is it important to record uh, the tester? Because uh, you will be able to see their behavior. So you can easily understand if the person is uncomfortable, for example, because it can be vi visual, uh, visible, sorry. Um, so let's say um, you can notice that the person uh, feels unwell, and often that happens when people feel motion sickness, especially the new people. Um, in most cases, they don't tell about it. So they um, just start being pale or maybe red, so you can observe it. And yes, okay, I mean, it's more, okay. Okay, let's go. Let's check. Um, Experience. Oh, where is? Yeah, there is a video. Oh, there's a video? Yeah, here it is, but it doesn't show. Yeah, it, it's on the screen. Oh yes, so this is an example, um, an example of user testing. So here we can see uh, the person, he is trying, he is thinking that it's a button. Uh, it's an experience, um, the first contact from Oculus. Um, so he just tells what he is doing, uh, he asks question, and normally it of course contains si sound, I just removed the sound because I thought I will be speaking. <laughs> So don't forget, uh, sound is really important because <laughs> this is why you are uh, recording that. So you can see he is explaining everything, what he is doing. Uh, when doing the uh, testing, you can also use a wearable device if you want. Uh, so you can track, for example, heart rate uh, or what else, blood or pressure if you need. For example, if it's a meditation experience. Uh, but you, you should consider your type of an app. So the most important rule is just observe what you see and check the experience, what's happening there. And when doing tests, don't forget to document demographics to see if there are maybe some patterns. And uh, they are set up, especially when doing a remote testing. So remote testing can be convenient but uh, obviously people who have a uh, device are experienced users. But on the other hand, they can be uh, new users to your particular app. So for VR setup document uh, device type and uh, specifications of computer such as like graphic cards because it obviously will affect the performance and um, if it's a phone, um, phone specifications. And finally, I'd like to talk a little bit about facilitator. So when doing tests, uh, remember to always introduce yourself, to uh, be nice, to put participants at ease so they feel comfortable and relaxed. Uh, always explain all the uh, software or hardware you are using because it may happen that uh, people actually know what they should uh, push or what, she, what they should do inside of VR, but they just forgot how to uh, push the button on controller. So make sure that people know <clears throat> how to use the controller. Um, yeah, and uh, finally, pay attention. I already told that it's really important to check the uh, emotions, um, uh, different uh, clues you can get from people's behaviors and understand what they think. Uh, also, important thing is 
to check, of course, if people feel okay. So if uh, you see that not, just uh, don't continue. <laughs> also hygiene, uh, don't forget to clean the lenses, and, but only clean with, uh, with the napkin they provide. Um, and uh, I found out that you can use, I think it's called surgical dressing, um, which you can buy in any store, I think. It's cheap and you can, it it's just stick to the uh, foam. So it was very, really convenient. Um, devices, um, make sure that your phones are charged and make sure that uh, your HMDs are not too hot. Environment, uh, pay attention to your surrounding. Uh, make sure that uh, testers are safe, uh, that they don't hurt themselves. So make sure it's uh, not too close to the walls because I know personally that when it happened that people crashed into the wall or someone broke the monitor. <laughs> so uh, it's uh, <laughs> important to remember. Finally, documents. So make sure the tasks are clear and short. Uh, this is moment is uh, also crucial because people forget, tend to forget what they need to do uh, when <laughs> once they put the headset on. So make sure it's clear and short, and better just test one thing at a time. <clears throat> um, next, ask, always ask to sign a consent form before you test. Um, by the way, I will have them available on the website as well. Uh, you can create a questionnaire if you want. For example, in the end of the test, uh, ask to sign NDA if you need, and you can review the ethical guidelines uh, if it's needed. For example, if you're testing with people of certain age, like kids, or maybe certain physical abilities, just to make sure you comply with all the possible situations. So these are the documents I used. Um, I will share some of them on vroxygen.com also. And let's check VR analytics. So it's important uh, to know the um, performance and how people uh, communicate with the app. In particular, I'd like to talk about the heat maps. So here is an example of 360 heat maps heat map from YouTube, but I know that it's also possible to use a heat map in Unity. Maybe it's available in a pro version. Uh, I personally didn't use Unity heat map, but I just want to let you know that it's possible. So you can observe where people look, uh, how frequent they change their position, uh, what are their favorite spots, um, so you can figure out uh, what might be the most interesting content for them. And finally, always document your findings. Even when uh, you found something that you were not actually looking for, uh, remember to document it because you may need it next time. You can even create a UX, re UX report if you want. And finally, analysis and evaluation and key findings. Uh, after you conducted all your tests, you can create affinity maps and analyze what people liked and what they didn't like. And I usually test and rate performance, gameplay, and comfort. Uh, one, uh, those are one of the most important. And uh, you can ask people also to rate an app in the very end of the test. And let's check some of the key findings. So here, um, this is the video from some time already. Uh, I was uh, actually testing uh, some other thing, but I found out that people don't actually look around. Those are new users, people who never used VR before, and some of them uh, were people who used it once. So you could see that uh, they, I, I, went, I told them before that uh, it's a 360 experience and that they can move and look in any direction.
but they didn't. Not, none of them. <laughs> and it was an interesting finding. Actually, at that time, I was looking for something else, but I found, no, they couldn't even get to that point. Uh, so, yeah, they got bored and they put it down. They didn't, they didn't uh, connect the diluting pointer to the fact that they can interact with something, so they just didn't. Um, oh, here I just wrote it down for you. And the next one, it's really funny. People perform any gestures. So it was not the only person. <laughs> so actually, many people who didn't try VR before, they tried uh, to do some <laughs> gestures or to grab something. Also, new users, when they find out that they can uh, move and grab something in VR, they just start grabbing everything. Just everything around, throwing it around. <laughs> so based on those findings, you can um, make hypotheses. Like, for example, here, um, a hypothesis would be uh, if I make all the objects in my VR experience interactive, it would definitely uh, be more engaging for people, so it, it will be more interesting, and people would stay longer. Um, with grabbing, I think that uh, it's uh, good to use the natural gestures. Like, for example, I really like Facebook Spaces, that it has grabbing and poking, because it's natural, and especially for people who never used VR, uh, it's really helpful, so the learning curve can be smoother. So yeah, here it's in writing. And finally, uh, just a few tips, quickly. Um, so when uh, working in VR, always consider user journey, uh, where the person will use it, uh, and why they will want to use it. Also, don't start your experience automatically. Uh, let the person fully control uh, the motion and the start of the experience. Always give the clear feedback, so make sure people understand what's happening around them and how are they doing, if uh, they are wrong, or if there are any errors, and so on. Also, make sure that all the sound you use is omnidirectional. Um, all sounds, either clues, directional clues, uh, and um, just, uh, I forgot the word, <laughs> just uh, ambient sound, because we don't uh, live in vacuum, so always include some sound, uh, unless it's intended to be in vacuum. Um, also, also here, I just realized, I forgot to mention, so, when we, with experience with birds, uh, the hypothesis could be that creating um, a UI or any important elements inside of the field of view of the user, uh, in 3D, of course, not, I don't mean sticking it to, it, to the view, uh, will help them to navigate and will let them know to understand that it's 360 experience. And uh, yes, they want to get bored. Also, another point is uh, always remember about your target audience for whom you are creating it. Wait, I'm sorry. And uh, finally, consider always consider ergonomics. So um, remember that when you do uh, some buttons or something, when the user have to look down like this, um, it gets uh, the user will get strain on their neck, and it's called text neck. So it's really uncomfortable. The other thing is uh, when you have interactions that require your hands uh, be up for a prolonged uh, time, period of time, uh, it will be also uncomfortable because in real life, we don't really hold our hands up all the time. And OK, get equipped. So finally, here, um, the software I was talking about. So Oculus Mirror, you can find this program there. It's inside of the Oculus folder, uh, so where you installed your Oculus. Uh, OBS, it's a free software for Mac, uh, PC, and Linux. Uh, with OBS, I would recommend to 
uh, set it up in advance because it has uh, quite a complicated settings. And if you set an output too high, um, it may get laggy. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> uh, so just yeah, remember to do everything in advance. Uh, I mean, uh, consider your graphics card and your processor, all those things. Uh, phone screencast, this is what you can use for user testing if you have a setup and if you have a TV. So you can use a Chromecast or uh, Apple TV and AirPlay. There won't be any wired connection. But I think the easiest way is to use a phone screen recorder if you don't have a TV, for example. So for Android, it's a little easier because there are a lot of free apps available, like AZ Screen Recorder or others. Uh, for iOS, there are less, very few actually free apps, and you would probably need to, um, re to trust the developer inside of your iOS system. <laughs> yeah, I, I almost done. Uh, iOS has built-in screen recording. That's a good news. And you can always use QuickTime, but you would need a wired connection. But maybe you have a very long cord, very long wire, then you can solve it. Um, and finally, on VR Oxygen, you can find the VR heuristics evaluation tool. You can find it even right now in print, and you can sign up to get updates when it's available in, as an online tool. Uh, it will be in about two weeks. Uh, you can also find uh, the tutorials like how to deploy VR app to Android and iOS on the YouTube channel. And you can, uh, you're welcome to contact me uh, through my, any of my channels. Uh, by the way, at my, so uh, the company is called VR Oxygen, but I also have a personal um, website, it's called aliva.com. You can find a lot of uh, very detailed case studies about VR there, so you can visit it too. And thank you. I think you can, yeah, I don't know if we have time for questions. You can uh, come talk to me. That was, that was incredible. And honestly, like, those, your drawings are so adorable. I was, hold on. Thank you, Olga. The, the, your drawings were amazing. That was really, really cute. Um, and I really like all the resources that you have at VR Oxygen, and maybe we can team together for usability testing night for, yeah, absolutely. Happy to help you guys. All right, guys, so thank you again. This has been such a successful series, and thank you, LinkedIn, again, for, for hosting us and for sponsoring this event. We really appreciate it. Angela, thank you. Thank you very much. And. Uh, we can ask everybody to pick up um, your garbage and throw it in the appropriate bins. And we know that there's limited room, but there is a garbage bin over on the left-hand side, little stage left. So, And also, um, keep in mind, if you work in VR, AR, and you're interested